Well, Hello, my name is Ray Lewis. I am a retired Philadelphia police captain. Officer Lewis, how long have you been out here part of the Ferguson protests? Well, I got here Saturday and I will be leaving probably Sunday or Monday. I was also out here in August for 10 days when the shooting first occurred. I think we have got some seen some footage from you in, back in August. What do you think has changed other than, of course, the, the non-indictment announcement, but what have you think has changed in the community in terms of what uh, it was like in August and what it was like now? That I don't know. I'm not, uh, I don't think I'm a good indicator of that because I've been away so much. But what I have seen both times that's the same is the commitment of the, of the community, people saying things have got to change. I've seen that then in August and I've seen that now again. They have not given up, people have not been dissuaded from coming out, they're still going to demand justice. What can you say as a former police officer about the brutality inflicted upon um, uh, people of color in this country because we have seen very little of that inflicted across the board with other groups of people. For instance, we haven't seen uh, young white kids shot with toy guns. What do you say about the um, uh, police brutality in your opinion from your experiences? It's pervasive. Uh, people think, well, that's a, Ferguson, what's wrong with the Ferguson Police Department? There's a thousand Fergusons across this country. Ferguson is not an isolated incident. And you're seeing a lot more incidents of police brutality now. Uh, all, every day on the internet you see something and a lot of people are saying, wow, things have really gotten worse here. Things have not gotten worse. It was the invention of the cell phone, the video. So people now, things that were not videotaped years ago are now being videotaped. So it's not getting worse. It's always been this way. It's always been this way. What would you think, in your opinion, would it take for it to change? Do you think that we, if we were to get a legitimate citizen review board with power to uh, indict officers for misconduct, that would be a, um, a panacea for this? What, what, is your, what is your answer? Panacea is a strong word. That would be a band-aid. And uh, it's better than nothing. The civil, civilian review boards are absolutely essential. But the, the real problem goes much deeper that you have a, a ruling class in this country. Uh, the ruling class lets people believe that you have a democracy. They let you believe that you have a choice of your leaders. And that is not true. Uh, those leaders, quote, those politicians are just nothing but puppets for the super rich in this country. And the super rich have destroyed the middle class. They've, uh, dis they've made minorities um, totally uh, helpless in trying to achieve uh, a good life. There's no the minimum wage. They refuse to uh, raise the minimum wage. And that's a disgraceful wage. It's not a minimum wage. It's a disgraceful wage. Uh, wage. And so the the immediate situation you can help with uh, civilian review boards and rich white America might let you get away with that because they're still going to be in control. You've got to stop the corporations in this country from making the rules. You have to make politicians really representative of the people's interests and not representative of the corporation's interests. It's been said that the police, the true role of the police is to protect the rich from the poor. Will you agree with that analysis? I'd agree with that 100%. Would that been the case in a, in a plutocratic society, what what could the people do to 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 wrestle power out of the, the hands of the oligarchs? Well, now you're talking about a a revolution, like other countries have experienced, and uh, I can't go on record as saying I support such a thing because I would be arrested as an anarchist and a threat to the security of this country. Well, one of our former presidents, or uh, I, I was even arguing to say one of our founding fathers has been uh, acknowledged as Thomas Jefferson says that we should have a revolution every so so yes, often. Did. Yes, he did say that. Yes. You know, I, so I wish I had his quote in front of me. We can. Well, just, you said it well. You yeah. said it, you, what you just said is 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 it. I don't know if he said a specific number of years, mm -hmm. but every so often it suffices. Every so often. Yes, he did. So with the, with, the, with that being said, and we we see what's going on here. I, 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 I haven't seen this number of young people. And you no know, lock arm and arm, shoulder to shoulder, for this duration of time, because it hasn't let up. It's been every day since um, uh, um, back in August. Uh, do you think this is anywhere close to to subsiding? Do you think this is um, just a flash in the pan, or do you think this is part of a bigger movement that might actually go somewhere? I think it's a bigger movement for one reason. This is not only happening here in Ferguson. Uh -huh. This is happening all across the country. New York City, Philadelphia, Boston, L.A. And it's a lot of young people. That gives me a lot of hope. 
It's this generation. This generation started the Occupy movement. Mm. I went down there three years ago, and I was quite inspired. You have a whole different generation. And uh, the fact that this is now national, no, I'm sorry, yeah, national, you have uh, the beginning of something that can continue. If this was only Ferguson, uh, I wouldn't have a lot of hope. But uh, young people across this country, and, they're, and a lot of these people, they're not even the victims of police abuse. They're not the victims. A lot of these people are white and they're, they're well to do, and, uh, but they, they realize that this is an unjust system and they're joining hands with others. Uh, Captain Lewis, I want to thank you so much for, uh, for, for standing uh, up, but I got one sure. question for you and I think it's maybe a little awkward for you, but in your opinion, uh, what do you think black officers, uh, what is their mood or what, what has been mm -hmm. your experience with black officers when they uh, confronted with police brutality by other officers? How, how, did it, how does that process go? I think there is a uh, war of a sensitivity there, but unfortunately, the longer they're in, the more they become programmed that it's part of the job and uh, they deserve whatever they get. And uh, they're on the good side, they're on the saved side. Mm -hmm. They're the, on the protected side. So they're not going to take any risk about being thrown off that side onto the uh, um, exploited side or the oppressed side. They're on the safe side. Safe side. Thank you, Captain Lewis. Thank you, guys. Right. If I may. Yes. Um, what do you think it would? What do you think? What do you think it would take uh, to change things sufficiently to make um, to get America back to a better place? Unfortunately, uh, I think what it would take is a uh, massive revolution that would throw all the politicians out and have a new form of government. This, this form of government has not been working and it's, uh, it's totally controlled by sociopaths. And when I say sociopaths, people who have billions of dollars and they continue to make more money for themselves and they're willing to poison the air and poison the water and destroy people's lives so and pay minimum wage so that they can continue to get more and more money. That's the definition of a sociopath. And sociopaths are very aggressive. Aggressive people become very wealthy. Most of us just want to live a modest, comfortable lifestyle, a middle class lifestyle. We're not out to be millionaires or billionaires, but the, and so we're not aggressive. But uh, people who want all that power, they get it. Because you, you, we don't want it, that's why we don't get it. But if you want it, you fight for it, you, and you become very powerful, and then you, have, uh, you don't care about anybody else. What would it take short of a revolution? Short of revolution, you would have to try to utilize the system in place, and that would be, uh, you have, 60% of the people don't vote, because they know, what sense, it's a corrupt system. Uh, whatever president, I, I, I thought Obama, I really thought he would change things. Uh, I, in fact, when he was inaugurated, I cried. I had tears coming down my face, because I, I, saw, I, ne I would never see this day. Uh, this is remarkable. Uh, but he's, he's greatly let me down. Uh, he, better than Bush, yes. Better than Romney, yes. But still, he's been a tremendous disappointment. So even there, when people had their, their one hope, we were disappointed. Uh, you, so you'd have to get the 60% people that don't vote to vote for somebody totally different. A third party candidate. Not a Democrat, not a Republican, but a third party candidate. That is the only hope I see in uh, without a revolution.